In today's episode, we are going to hear from three park rangers who have had very strange and odd encounters while on the job. But before we get into the stories, if you're a regular listener and haven't subscribed, I would love to have you on board. Now let's get into the stories. Hi Donovan, I'm a park ranger in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I'm new to this area, having transferred here from the Shenandoah Valley. My wife and I have been married for three years now, and we're expecting our first child in about a month. I was born in Tennessee, but my family moved to Virginia when I was young. I've always loved the woods and animals, so naturally I wanted to go into wildlife management or conservation. I enlisted in the Army right out of high school and joined their conservation program there. After four years of service, I got out with an honorable discharge and applied at several national parks across the country before being accepted here in Tennessee. My wife is also originally from Tennessee. She grew up on a farm just outside of Knoxville before moving to Virginia after high school where she met me at a bar one night while celebrating her 21st birthday with her friends. She's not as outdoorsy as me, though. She prefers staying inside and reading books or watching TV shows, rather than going on hikes or camping like me. Like I said, I was still fairly new to working at the park, so I'm still trying to get used to the area. I received a call that someone near one of the backcountry sites was injured. I headed over there, and about 15 minutes later, I arrived to see a woman sitting on the ground and her leg was bleeding. She was grabbing it in pain. I asked her, are you okay? She replied, I don't know, I think I broke my leg. I called an ambulance and started performing first aid on her leg where there was an open cut. I asked her what happened and she told me that she was walking the trail when she felt like she was being followed by someone. She started picking up the pace and turned around and saw this large creature walking on the pathway following her. She started running and then the creature began running after her. That's when she tripped on this tight turn on the path where there were some rocks on the other side, which is exactly where I found her. She told me that it appeared tall and muscular with this creepy feminine face. She also mentioned that its arms were extremely long like an ape, and it was covered in this long, thick, brown-reddish fur. When she fell down, it came up close to her and gently reached out its hand like it was trying to help her. At that exact moment, she said she got stung by a yellow jacket and jumped and screamed, and the creature let out this loud yelp and ran off into the woods. I don't know if I buy this story, This lady is basically saying she saw a Sasquatch. Whatever the case may be, she wasn't harmed by it directly. The ambulance showed up a few minutes later and took her to the hospital. Now, I haven't been a park ranger for that long, but I did find your channel and I wanted to send this story to you because even though it's not my encounter, it's an encounter from someone at my park. Now, after I told my wife this story... She'll never come camping with me again. I probably shouldn't have told her. It's true there's a well-known saying about us park rangers. You get paid in sunrises and sunsets. You don't do this job for the pay. And sometimes you have to wonder why we work so hard to get these federal jobs. You must know that the people who are naturally inclined to take these jobs enjoy nature and enjoy complete and utter solitude. It's the most unlikely group of people you'd ever expect to want to work with, and it's probably no secret you have to give up a lot. It's very difficult for any family, or for you to meet somebody. You'll work for years and years until you finally can get a permanent spot, only to realize that you're kicked out. But if you're a nature freak like I am, there are so many pros to this position. Although just about any job you take has its cons, this one included. I'll let you in on a little story that happened to me a few years back when I was still doing my rounds as a ranger. We had gotten complaints from a campsite at the farther end of the park. I checked this family and myself only a couple days prior. Not the kind that would have a bad attitude. 
the kind that would be polite and not complain about small, inefficient things. I made my way over there, and I got a chance to talk to the father. He was complaining that there was this horrendous smell of what he thinks was possibly a dead deer nearby. He told me he hadn't smelled it the day prior. I went to go check it out myself because when somebody tells you this, you naturally become curious. Now my first thought was that maybe some coyotes got a deer, or maybe a doe, or maybe a doe had just recently died and started rotting and stinking. You never know. So I go back behind the camp. Everything seems okay. I travel a little further, maybe 30 or 40 yards, and there we go. There's this tiny little crevice in the ground. I found a doe, well, at least part of her. Her spine and innards had been torn out from her stomach and chest. This was a very violent death, something that natural predators don't normally seem to do. I've seen the way mountain lions kill, and I've seen the way wolves and coyotes kill. They're all very similar to an extent. They eat the cadaver. They tear things apart, but not like this. This seemed like it was done with human intention or force. This animal also appeared to have four broken legs, as if someone grabbed it and held it down and tore its body open. This was unusual and very grisly. The other odd piece of it, too, was that this smell wasn't coming from this doe. In fact, even though this doe had appeared to be dead for a couple days now, it actually didn't really have much of a smell for whatever reason, and the campers, being about 40 yards away, should not have smelled it at all. Maybe the wind was picking it up. I wasn't sure, it just didn't make much sense to me. So I disposed of the cadaver or whatever was left. That's when I got a call on my radio, saying that another camper on the other side of the park was also complaining of a very similar situation. An overpowering stench of a rotting dead animal and was convinced there was a bear around. I worked my way all the way to the other end of the park and spoke to this individual, a middle-aged man who was camping by himself, complaining about the same thing as the other family. A horrendous stench of death, although this time, when I investigated, I went about as far as a hundred yards outside of his camp into the forest. I couldn't find a trace of the smell, nor could I find the smell myself. I couldn't see any reason why there would be such a smell. I had asked him again the last time he smelled it and how often he had been smelling it, and he said it would come and go and only started smelling in the past day. I did another thorough investigation by myself, but I couldn't find anything. That was the end of that day. About two days go by and I don't hear anything. No more complaints. The park is somewhat busy too, which is somewhat of a surprise that I didn't get any more complaints. Hopefully whatever it was had passed. Although it's common to find animals, it wasn't common the way that they were dying or the way people were describing smelling them. But I guess I didn't think much of it at the time, considering it was only two individuals that made a small complaint. This is where my story ties its ends. I very distinctly remember this day. I can remember it was pouring down rain, or at least throughout the day. We were having bouts of rain, and I got a complaint from an elderly lady and her husband who seemed to be long-term campers. She complained that she had heard some sort of screaming and smelled the awful same stench that had been described to me by the previous campers. She described it as maybe a deer or something, possibly coyotes tearing apart a deer. She wasn't sure, so this caused me to investigate it further, and maybe I would get to the source of this weird thing going on. But to be able to smell that in the pouring rain and with all that humidity out, which means it had to be a very strong smell. Now this part of the camp I was at, or part of the park, the brush and the forest were much thicker than other areas. Even more of a surprise that she could smell it, which would mean whatever the odor source was had to have been close by. I think I made it maybe 60 or 70 yards in before I finally found the source after making my way through the brush. 
I saw what it was that was the source of the smell, and I stopped and had to cover my mouth for fear that I would scream or yell. What I saw in front of me was this large, what I thought was a man, pitch black, from its head to its toe built very wide, large, large shoulders, no neck, and kind of a pointed cone head, a barrel-like body, and this long gorilla hair, kind of like an orangutan, where it's so long that it kind of hangs off of you. Whatever this thing was that I was looking at, I caught it in the act. It had a doe in its hands, and right before my eyes, it grabbed its head and twisted its head and neck completely off its body, as if it were a mere piece of paper. The motion was completely effortless, and the deer, if being close to dead, was now dead. No questions asked. It did it so smoothly and so fluidly, I don't think that deer ever had time to blink. After the head was pulled off, of course, there was lots of blood. This thing grabbed the deer by the back of the legs and threw it over its shoulder like a hunter would who had just killed a rabbit and casually walked off. The smell of death and rotting meat followed with it. Due to the fear of not being believed, mocked, or potentially losing my job, I never said a word to anybody and kept it to myself. I ended up telling the elderly lady that the situation was taken care of and that it was just a dead deer eaten by coyotes and we would have it taken care of for her. After that, I never saw anything like it again. So I don't know if this was a Sasquatch or what it was, but maybe it was coming to the area to hunt. That's just a guess. I don't know anything about them, but I guess that would make sense if they're anything like us humans. Thank you for taking the time to listen and to read my story. I've told a few of my close mates about the same story, and I know they always come to the same conclusion. It was probably some unknown animal, but I've been in the woods a lot, and I'm not exactly sure what unknown animal would mean, but I guess that's the only way to describe what I heard that day because I certainly never saw what it was, but it made itself audibly known. This was somewhere between 2007 and 2008. I was working as a forest ranger at the time, doing service work on a closed-down trail for maintenance. This would have been in the spring, and we were busy prepping it to open it back up to the public. There had been a landslide on several parts of the trail, due to having such an incredibly wet fall and winter. You can't just allow the public to walk on these, you know. We have to make sure they are deemed safe. It was roughly 2.30, maybe 3 p.m. in the afternoon. An overcast day, not cold but not warm by any means. Roughly around the end of March. And I don't know exactly at what point I picked up on it, but everything around me fell silent. Just the wind. There was an uneasiness about this silence. I know it's entirely possible for the forest to go quiet, but usually there is a reason for it. Sometimes it means there's a large predator in the area. Other times it could just be because animals aren't out. But there was just something about this, like it wasn't that I just suddenly noticed it. My inner being felt it, if that makes sense to you. And it gave me this incredible uneasiness It made me pick up my pace even faster to get to my destination quicker. I wasn't exactly feeling great about the current circumstances. Although, during this, I wasn't thinking about any monsters in the woods or anything like that. I just did not want to be caught off guard, even if there was a predator like a mountain lion or something like that. I'll never forget this part. I got to a curve in the trail when I stopped dead in my tracks. Off to my right, there's a thick area of brush and trees, and to my left, there's a sharp rock wall. I heard this low growling noise. It was kind of growling like if you continue to come forward, you're going to get attacked, or eaten, or worse. It made me stop, and I looked around, searching for a source of this noise, but I couldn't see anything. The foliage was just starting to grow back but still very bare and minimal considering spring had just barely started. 
And it wasn't at all like May or June where everything is full and lush with leaves and brush. The noise was sounding like it was up in the trees and not at ground level. But I figured that was impossible because I was looking in the direction that I could have sworn I heard the growling coming from. And there was nothing. But it sounded as if it was coming from an animal merely 20 or 30 feet away from me, right off to my 3 o'clock. There was no way to describe it. And then it got deeper and louder and began to get closer to me with still nothing to see. This made me incredibly fearful. There was no reason why I should not be able to see whatever it was growling at me. There was nothing obstructing my field of vision or view. There was also really no object or tree that an animal of this capacity that can make this deep of a growling could hide behind, at least without getting noticed. No, it wasn't a bear and there would have been nowhere for a bear to hide and continue to make that noise. Then I heard a very similar growling noise from off to my left behind me at my 7 o'clock. I quickly turned around again and I didn't see anything. Now I had to keep watch to my left and to my right. I felt like I was in a pretty sticky situation. So I quickly put my back against the sharp rock ledge and slowly walked my way across the path away from these sounds. The growling noise continued, but never seemed to move other than to come closer to the spot that I was at on the trail. Maybe I was hallucinating. Maybe I was going crazy. But the farther I got away from that spot, it seems like the sounds of the forest began to come back, even though very minimal. There were still sounds present, and now I was far enough away. I was beginning to hear them again. I ended up talking to my supervisor and told him all the weird stuff that is going on on that trail, and I would appreciate it if I could walk a different way back and have some help. I should mention this before I forget, but at the time, my supervisor and the small team of other rangers that I worked with, we all knew that weird stuff was going on. None of us were strangers to it, and although we didn't mention anything to the public, or to anybody else, we all talked about it. So I felt very comfortable opening up to my supervisor and telling him what had happened. He completely understood. Anyway, I'm sorry if my story isn't all that exciting, but I'm pretty sure it was something other than a wolf or a bear, because neither of those animals make that kind of deep growling. I wish I could tell you what I suspect it was, but I never saw it. I don't know. I'll never know, but what I do know is weird stuff like this has gone on in the woods for long, long periods of time, long before I ever became a ranger.